Now the breakdown of each part, the RD8 rotator, and what all those knobs actually do. The RD8 rotator does have a locking knob on it. You should tighten that down before mounting it to the top of your tripod. Once you've done that, you can begin the mounting process. Tighten her down so it doesn't come loose. Okay, so then you can loosen that locking knob up and the RD8 freely spins. You can feel the click stops working as they click into place as you rotate it around. Notice this little knob right here? I wasn't sure what that was, so I unscrewed it. Inside of it was an Allen set already built in. Very cool feature. That is for these. These are the detent plungers. You can adjust the detent plunger tension setting. So those little ball bearings that snap into place, it's very cool. If you want it to snap in or have a looser feel, you can adjust that to your personal setting. Awesome stuff. And it just simply stores back in the locking knob. Also I noticed, hey, there's threads in there. What's that for? Well, that's because these detent plungers actually can be unscrewed and removed. Well, once you've done that, it allows you to store the detent plunger so it's not just dangling around, maybe getting caught on something, screwing up your panorama, or damaging something to your rotator. All right, so let's pause the video real quick and actually discuss what those little detent plungers do. Because as you look at the rotator, you can see that there are eight detent selections or degree settings on the RD8 rotator four, five, six, and 30 degrees. Then you also notice that there's four divided by two, five divided by two, and so on, giving you all eight detent selections. Well, four of those only require one of the detent plungers. That would be four, five, six, and 30 degrees. Well, if there's eight settings, that would mean four divided by two equals two degrees. You would need that secondary plunger to go in there, or, 5 degrees divided by 2 is 2.5, needing that second plunger. Or if you wanted to shoot 15 degrees, you would sink both of those detent plungers in the 30 degree setting. So now that we've explained the detent plungers and what the rotator looks like and what all those little indicators are on there, that will hopefully help you understand how this rotator works and how you're able to get eight selections with all those different degree settings and slash marks. It was really quite simple once I was able to understand it myself. On the top of the RD8 rotator is an Arca Swiss style clamp. You see that pin and that button? If you depress that button, it drops the pin, allowing you to gain access to the Arca Swiss clamp and the rail that you apply to it. Here's another neat feature of the RD8 rotator. You see that indicator and this index ring that I'm sliding around on the bottom? You can lock that indicator or index ring in by that knob. This is all about personal preference and the math that you might use for your panoramic image. There's also an indicating line on the back side of the rotator underneath the NN stamp. You see as you move the index ring or you're traveling around the rotator, if that index ring is locked, it shows you the degree setting that you might be at. And lastly is that small blue ring. This is a customizable indicator for you to know where to start or stop based on how you shoot your panoramic or gigapixel imagery. Now we'll be setting up the lower rail with the rail stop. The M2 Giga comes with a 210 millimeter rail and you can see that there's marking indicators on each side of the rail. So if you're left or right handed, it doesn't matter. This end here has a spirit level and the other end has a stop pin. This stop pin is quite valuable, and you will see in the assembly later how that comes into play. This little doodad right here, that's the rail stop. This is a really great little tool. An Allen set comes with it to loosen it. Because it's an Arca Swiss built platform, you just have to loosen it a little bit, just enough to slide it like this. And because it has jaws on it, it won't fall out. Once you know the no parallax point of the camera body and the lens that you're using, you can tighten it back down. And for demonstrative purposes, we're just going to tighten it down here so you can see how it gets applied. So once that's all set, the quick release clamp is ready to accept the rail. Push that button down and slide the rail until it bumps the stop. You can now tighten the jaws on the quick release clamp 
holding on to the rail nice and solid. Next, we'll show you how the vertical assembly is placed on the lower rail. The M2 Giga vertical assembly has an Arca Swiss jaw. Place that into the Arca Swiss rail and slide that to the stop pin. You'll want to make sure that the plunger levers are facing the stop pin. Tighten the jaws in the assembly and you're all set. Now, let's explain the blue plunger levers on the back of the Giga plate. These are the stopping plungers in action. You will lift the lever to engage the stopping mechanism to the plate. You will also want to use the upper rotator index ring, which we'll talk about later, to align the pins with the degree increments of your choice. Seeing the stopper plungers here in action against the Giga plate, you will come to understand all the different degree settings from 1.5 all the way to 7.5 degrees on the back of the Giga plate. Let's take a moment and talk about the Gigaplate adjustable stops. For demonstrational purposes, we did remove the upper rail so that you can get a good visual on what these stops do and how they function. Real quickly, they slide within the Gigaplate. You simply loosen, slide it to your point of desire, and lock it down. But why are these here and why are they important? When you're shooting a high definition panoramic image, you want to take your highest and lowest points of interest and set it in place so that your vertical rotation remains consistent all the way through your picture taking process. Once you point your camera up and find the highest point of interest, you slide that stop in and lock it into place. Then you would take your lowest point of interest, slide that stop in and lock it into place. Once that's completed, you'll see how the stop actually functions against the inside of the Giga vertical assembly. It stops it every time, consistently, same place. This is helpful for you as a photographer because that's what you would want, a consistent picture-taking process from beginning to end. The drag knob is a customizable knob that keeps the desired friction that is determined by you. It is the drag knob that keeps the level of friction setting even after you loosen or tighten the locking knob, which offers you the smooth feeling that you are looking for when operating the upper gimbal arm. Let's explain the upper rotator indexing ring. The upper rotator indexing ring gives you the visual marks needed for each degree setting. So whether it is 1.5, 3.75, or 7.5 degrees, the index ring will show you the precise place to stop. Also, you can switch to a left or right hand user, which is what I demonstrated here as well. Another feature on the Gigaplate is this locking knob. When needed to expand the working range on the Gigaplate, simply loosen it, make the adjustment to your desired location, and tighten it back down. Installing the upper rail onto the vertical assembly. Exactly like the lower rail, the upper rail will have a stop that you install on it. Take the rail and place it into the jaws of the quick release clamp. All the way until the stop touches the quick release clamp, tighten it down, and you're all set. Let's install the camera body on the upper rail. Because it's an Arca Swiss built platform, you'll have an Arca plate to the bottom of your camera body. Align those indexing lines and tighten down the clamp on the quick release clamp. The M2 Giga magnifying glass for the upper rotator. This tool is excellent for low light conditions as it has a LED to illuminate the indexing ring. This, along with having a magnifying glass so that you can clearly see the finest degree settings on the upper rotator indexing ring. 